Whether you're doing development, testing, DevOps, or just building out the architecture for an enterprise scale application, it's always good to have a free, open source, and standards-based database at your disposal. And for my money, the very best one that fits that bill is the free MySQL database. Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief over at theserverside.com. I'm also the author of Hibernate Made Easy, a persistence technology. So I know a thing or two about databases, and I've been using MySQL for well over 10 years right now, but my favorite version is the latest one. And I wanna show you how to download MySQL, install the MySQL database, install some of the goodies that come with it, such as the MySQL workbench. And after we do that, I wanna show you how to create some schemas, create some database tables, and maybe even issue a few queries against those database tables as well. But in order to do that, the first thing we've got to do is download and install MySQL, and that is exactly what we're going to do next. So the first stop on this installation of MySQL journey is mysql.com slash downloads. Now, when you get to this page, you'll see a number of different options. You'll see MySQL Enterprise Edition, NDB Cluster. What you want is this hidden link down at the bottom here for the MySQL Community GPL downloads. And when you come here, again, you'll see a number of different options depending on what you want to install. I'm a Java developer, so that connector J link really interests me, but I'm not doing Spring Boot development right now. I just want to install MySQL and get a couple of tables created. And so what I'm going to select is the MySQL installer for Windows. Now, this comes in a, a couple of flavors. There is the um, full 300 meg download, and then there's a, a lightweight 2 meg download. I'm going to select that one. After I selected it, it says, hey, you've got to log in or sign up. And I'm like, hey, I thought this was just open source software. I didn't realize that I had to get uh, linked to a bunch of newsletters. And then all of a sudden, I see the link that says, no, thank you. You're not getting my personal information. I just want to download this software. So click on that link down there. And very quickly after downloading that link, you'll see the installer comes up. Now, you know, we do want to support the people that provide open source software to us. So I skipped the, the login and registration, but hey, go ahead and log in and register as well. Let them know that uh, you're using your open, their open source software and uh, you appreciate the work that Oracle is doing to, to keep it open source. Okay. After I open up this little installer, uh, I'm given a couple of options. I want you to install the full suite of tools that comes with MySQL. Now, if you want to see what those are, you can click on custom and you can kind of see, well, there's some stuff for documentations or some applications like the MySQL Workbench, MySQL Shell, MySQL Router to help you scale your applications. You can go into custom and select which components you want. But, you know, for me, I'm just going to do full, right? It's open source software. This stuff is pretty lightweight. I'm actually running on a 10 year old third generation Intel processor here on the computer that I'm demoing this on. Um, so, you know, it doesn't take a lot of resources. So the full installation is what I'm going to go with. Now I'm going to click execute here and I'm going to keep my fingers crossed and hope that all of this downloads. Sometimes a component won't download um, and it will say there's an error. If that happens, just click the back button and then click the forward button again. And sometimes it will then uh, re-download the component and Bob's your uncle, you can start doing the full installation. Okay, and I knew it. See, there's a little error there on the MySQL shell. Don't let that bother you. are gonna click the back button. I'm gonna click the next button again. It's gonna realize that it didn't download that successfully. So I'll click execute. Ah, there you go. It is now doing that full download. So as they say, where there's a will, there's a funeral, but sometimes there's a way as well. Boom. That's now been downloaded. So I'll click next and allow each of those resources to be installed.
Okay, and it looks like all the basic things have been installed. I think what we need to do now is a little bit of configuration. So I'll click next here. And it'll say, are you ready to configure MySQL server, MySQL router, samples and examples? And I'm like, yeah, I'm ready to do it. So starting off, it'll give you a little bit of a configuration for the basic MySQL server. You notice that port 3306 is what's being used. If you're doing development or you need to connect a, an application to this database, uh, keep track of that port number that you're using. I'm going to accept the defaults there. Click next. Now it's gonna ask for the authentication method. I'm just gonna put password in as the password. And potentially I could add a MySQL user account, which is probably a good idea to do. I'm gonna skip over that for now, just click next. Then it's gonna ask if I wanna start this as a Windows service because I am installing this on Windows. That makes sense to me, makes it easy to stop it and start it. It's gonna make sure that uh, um, the folder that we're gonna store all the data in, uh, we have permissions for. That all looks good to me. After setting up that configuration, it says, okay, we're gonna fire this off and get that MySQL database server installed. And it does that and it only takes a, a couple of seconds for this all to be configured. Now, we uh, click the finish button here, but are we really finished? Um, well, not really. There's a couple of other components that uh, we might want to uh, do some configuration on as well, like that router and some of the samples. So there's a basic router configuration. This is used to route requests from applications to highly scalable backend MySQL databases. I'll just accept the defaults there and click finish. Um, it's going to ask for my password right now just to make sure that uh, I can connect to the server put my password in looks like everything is running properly click execute on a couple of the final configurations here and then click finish looks like the last thing to do is just configure some of those samples that only takes a, a millisecond to do. Once we're done, we can click finish. And a couple of things will open up. The uh, MySQL shell will open up. I'm not a big command line guy, so I'm gonna skip over that. But what does come up that I'm very interested in is the MySQL workbench. So I'm gonna double click on this local instance right here, type in my password, maybe even save that password in the vault. And boom, all of a sudden, uh, MySQL comes up. Now, I wanna see the database, I wanna see the tables. And oh no, it's not there, I can't see it. You gotta click on schemas here, right? <laughs> so I click on schemas here, and you can see it's actually configured a, a couple of, of schemas for me. There's this, the world database, and it looks like it's got cities in it. I can just right click and say, select rows, and boom, all of a sudden it gives me back all sorts of rows of the database. Uh, Kabul, Herat, all, Amsterdam, Rotterdam, all sorts of great cities in there. So that's one way to, to just query stuff. There's a, another database up here, so you can look at all the actors in this database. Penelope Guinness and Nick Wahlberg. You know, just right click on it, do select. That allows you to see all of the, the resources in that database. Now, I wanted to uh, show you actually how to create a schema and maybe create your own database and even populate it using this tool. And again, it's super easy to do that. All you have to do is come over here. I'm gonna right click here and uh, say create schema. So an example that I use in a lot of my Spring Boot tutorials is I use I play a rock, paper, scissors game. And I think in, in Asia they call rock, paper, scissors, shambo. So I'm going to create a, a schema to hold all my rock, paper, scissors tables. And I'm going to call it Rashambo. There we go. It's fairly easy to do. I'm going to click apply. And when I click apply, it's actually going to show me the standard SQL that's going to get executed. It's like, do you want to execute that? And I'm like, yeah, that's why I put it in there. And boom, all of a sudden you see this Rashambo database over here. Now, a database isn't very interesting unless you got some tables in it. So I could create a table. Now, one way that I can create a table is um, I could just do some SQL. 
So let me see if I've got uh, some sequel here. Uh, I got some canned sequel. I'm over here. It says query one right there. So there's a little tab there to allow me to, to run a query. I'm going to paste in this create table query. Create table Rishambo game summary. So when somebody plays a game, we want to keep track of the, the client gesture, the server gesture, the result, and the primary key. Uh, primary key is going to be an, an uh, integer. I'm going to highlight that. Click the little lightning bolt there. And down here it says, hey, it looks like we created that table. Now I don't see it there. Did it work? Well, all I have to do is refresh and open this up. And there you go. We've got our game summary table. Um, now what else could we do? Well, maybe I could run a query and insert something into that table. So that's the next thing I'm going to do. I'll paste a little query there. Insert into Rashambo game summary, client, server, result, rock, paper, and win. Highlight all of that. Click execute. I get a little message at the bottom here that says that all worked and went swimmingly, but I'm from Missouri. I like to, to see if it really did. So I'll do select rows and there you go. Boom, rock, paper, and win right there in the uh, record with ID number one. So you can see we're creating records, we're creating tables, we're querying those tables with the SQL tool. It's incredibly easy to do. Now, by the way, uh, you, you don't have to just do SQL if you want to create tables. So you can come over here, right click on table and say create table. And there's a wizard that will help generate the SQL for you. So I always have a, a score table where we just keep track of the score, wins, losses, and ties, right? So we always have a column called, I don't know, it's always ID, right? You gotta have that ID column of type int. Um, I want it auto-generated, so uh, auto-increment, so I click that AI in there. Uh, maybe keep track of the wins. That should be an int. Maybe keep track of the losses. That should be of type int. Maybe keep track of the ties. That should be of type int as well. I should probably put like a, a reference to the player, but <laughs> I'll do that later. Maybe we'll map the ID. Now, uh, I would say none of those should be null, so I'll select uh, non-null, NN on those. Also over here with ID, yeah, that's auto increment is selected. Um, that all looks good. I can click apply here. That's going to generate the SQL for me. Create table, rishambo.score with wins, losses, and ties. I'm going to click apply. It says, do you want to execute those statements? I sure do. And then I come over here and it's not, oh, it is there. I didn't even have to click refresh. This is getting amazing. Um, now, if I actually select this table, you can see there's nothing in it. Um, I could run some, some SQL, but uh, I don't know. I think, can't we actually just click this button here and insert a row? So I can actually do ID one wins 22, losses 11 and ties five. Click apply. It says, hey, we'll do a little insert operation there. I think that looks good to me. Click finish. And now we've got that record inserted into that table. If I come over here and score select rows, there you go. We can see that set of tables in there. So there you go. That's how easy and straightforward it is to download the MySQL database, install the MySQL database, configure the MySQL database along with tools like the, the MySQL scripting engine um, and uh, the MySQL workbench, which I love working with. Um, it really is fairly straightforward. And then creating a schema, then creating tables inside that schema, you know, you can do it just with MySQL and there's visual editors in there as well. So um, it's super easy to use. And by the way, I've also got a couple of other tutorials on how to actually query this database from Spring Boot or some, from some Java code or even some Python code if you're interested in doing that. Um, so if you're a developer and you want to take this to the next level, um, check out some of those tutorials as well. Anyways, that's about it. I uh, just want to say if you're interested in what I'm up to, head over to the serverside.com. I am the editor in chief over there. We got lots of great tutorials on databases, MySQL, software development. If you're interested in me personally, you can follow me on Twitter 
at Cameron MCNZ is my handle. I do have a couple of books available back there, like Hibernate Made Easy and Pickering is Springfield that I mentioned earlier. And then finally, you know, if you are watching this on YouTube, well, why don't you subscribe on YouTube?